Stuka Joe here, and this is Dawn of the Zed's third edition. And I've been playing the uh, Apocalypse level. I've been playing for a couple of hours, and I just realized that I was screwing up one of the rules of the game. That when there's an infection outbreak and new Zeds come into the game, they begin on a track in a space that has a chaos marker. I was starting those uh, Zeds in the start space of the track, which made, of course, the game easier for me. No sweat, no problem at all. I'm going to start all over again. I'm having a blast with this game. This is a fine game. You can see here the quality of the components. Uh, to put it simple, in simple terms, zombies never look this good. So you can spend uh, 15 bucks and go watch a zombie movie knowing that the good guys are going to win always at the end, or you can stick around, pay nothing, and watch the upcoming playthrough of the apocalypse scenario. Uh, I don't know who's going to win. The good guys may win, or this thing can get ugly pretty quickly. This is the player aid card that the game brings. In the playthrough, you will not be seeing this. Here is the hand-to-hand -hand combat table, and you can see that it is uh, odds-based, but it is expressed in a different way. The best column for the Zeds is the Zeds times 3, followed by Zeds times 2, then Zeds advantage equal 2, and then you have human advantage, human times 2, and human times 3. In this game, we locate the uh, column where the attack will be resolved, and we roll two dice. And there are circumstances that shift the column uh, to, the le to the right. If you're, we are defending, for example, in a namespace, uh, we shift the column one space to the right. If there is a barricade in the space, then it's two columns to the right. In some cases, uh, there will be shifts to the left. But instead of you seeing the hand-to-hand -hand combat table, what you will be seeing in the game whenever we have uh, such hand-to-hand -hand combat are these uh, markers, like this one here, which appears to be floating in the air. Well, it's floating in the air. Well, it's not really floating in the air, but it looks like it's floating in the air. I'm not going to tell you how it looks or why does it look like it's floating in the air. That's uh, the object of a Gadgets of Wargaming video. But we will be using these uh, signs, which do not come with the game, to facilitate explaining the game so that we don't interrupt the flow of the narrative. Now, in this particular attack, this would start at that column, Zed's advantage column, but because this is a named space, Ingeberg, there is a one column shift to the right, which you will see in the game, in the form of a sign that says equal to. And then we will roll the dice under the final column to be used. And in this game, the higher the number, the better for us humans. The lower the number, the better for the Zeds. And in this case, we see that the defending unit, which is uh, Sheriff Hunt, receives three hits, which is enough to eliminate him. And then we would see what is called a saving die roll. One to three, and he goes to the cemetery. Four to six, and he is in comatose condition at the hospital. So uh, you would see probably that die roll. Oh, not a good result. Let's hope he does better in the playthrough. And that's what you will be seeing in the upcoming playthrough. I will be using those uh, signs that, again, don't come with the game. They are just aids that I will use to uh, show what's going on in the game without having to uh, consult tables. So this is Dawn of the Zeds, third edition. We will be playing the Apocalypse level. So stay tuned. Coming up next, see ya.